In this video, I'll show you how to create a professional looking WordPress website using zero coding, mostly free tools. So whether you want to create a blog, a business website, a personal portfolio website, this method is fast, beginner friendly and 100% doable today. Let's get straight into it. This is a type of website we'll be creating. We've got a beautiful header section with a lovely mega menu. So we can display dynamic content here. So if you want to display latest posts, pull in feed from your Instagram, you name it, you can make your menus rich and dynamic. And I'll show you how. If we have a look at a few other examples, maybe you want a more softer feminine touch to your website. So we can create something like this or even something like this. If you want to sell products online, you can do so. Or maybe you want something a bit more sleeker and a bit more professional like this. I'll show you how you can utilize any of these designs with a simple click or using a free WordPress theme as well. And that theme is Citadella WP. I'll leave a link in the description below, or you can head over to aitthemes.com slash free. This is a special URL. So make sure you put that slash free to be able to download this particular WordPress theme for free. Usually it's paid, but as a YouTube viewer, you can get access to it for free. So all you have to do is just click download, enter in a valid email. It will send you over the theme file. And then we just need to upload and install it onto our WordPress site, which we'll do now. All right. So once you're in your WordPress website, you just need to navigate over to appearance and then themes. A side note as well, if you haven't sorted your hosting, I'll leave a link in the description below and show you how you can get that up and running and also utilize a free website installation service. All the details are in the description below. So we'll click on add theme and then we'll go ahead and click upload theme. We'll choose the file in which we've just downloaded and then we'll just click install. Once you've done so, you'll see the Citadella WP theme menu here. Here we've got this prompt to install the pro plugin for Citadella WP. The listing, this is optional. This is only if you want to create a directory website. So we can click install plugins. Okay. And then from here, we can go ahead and import one of our starter templates. So I'm going to use the electrician template, which is this one here. So I'll just click import layout. And just as a side note, it will delete all the files on your website. So you want to do this on a brand new website or a staging site. So it's saying it's uploaded fine. We should note as well that by default, the Citadella WP theme doesn't allow you to create advanced menu structures. We'll need the AIT blocks plugin for that. So this is our basic menu here. And if you remember in our demo example, we created this more advanced menu here with this mega menu and so on. But I'll leave a link in the description below to where you can actually get the AIT blocks plugin. All right, so we've got our template installed. Now let's have a quick tour of the AIT blocks plugin, because we will be utilizing this to create more advanced styling and even add different layouts as well to our website. So this will 5x the amount of time it will take us to create our website design. And you'll see why in a minute. So a few things, we want to enable this site builder here. Dynamic content we can enable. If you want to add AI content to your website using ChatGPT, you can go ahead and enable this option here and you'll be able to automatically rewrite content on your website or even insert content onto your website using this particular plugin. We've got a few other options here. We can customize the font styling and so much more. It just adds a lot more advanced features to your website. You'll also have the ability as well to add contact form. You can add pop-ups as well. So you can collect your prospects or customers email address, right? And then you can remarket to them later on. Okay. So I'm just going to click on site builder here. And right now we're going to actually go ahead and customize our header section. So I'm going to scroll down to header and I'm going to go ahead and select this template here. I'm not too sure why the screenshot isn't working on my end. Our internet's going super slow today. All right. And then from here, we've got the option to choose where we want to add this custom header design on our website. So we can show it on our entire website or we can show it on specific pages only. I'm going to select entire website and just save conditions. Occasionally you'll see a message like this saying invalid content. We just need to click attempt recovery and voila, it's done. 
All right, let's click on our site logo. Let's change our site logo here. So we'll click replace media gallery. And I'm going to select this logo here. All right, that looks good. Let's resize it. Okay. And the first thing I like to do when I'm editing a page, especially if it's got existing content on the page, is click on document overview here. So currently we can see we've got two rows. We've got this row here, our main row, and then we've got this second row here. So I'm going to click on this row and let's go ahead. Let's scroll down to where it says flex properties. And I just want to make sure everything's vertically aligned to be in the middle. All right, that looks good. And now I'm going to go ahead and create our mega menu. So I'm just going to click on this menu item here. If you want to change the name, you can change the label here, All right? But I'm going to click sub menu and then I'm going to select mega menu. And then from here, I'm going to click this plus icon and I'm going to select row. If you don't see row, you can just search for it. I'm going to select this two column layout here. I'm going to click this plus icon again, and I'm going to select image. Again, you can always search for it if you don't see it. Let's choose a image, select this one. And then I'm going to click this plus icon over here. And then I'm going to drag and drop this list block by the AIT blocks plugin right here. And then we can rename these menu items. So I'll say latest. Charles. Let's say perks, right? Working for our company. And then maybe just about us. Okay, let's change the icon by clicking on it. Let's select this one. Let's do the same for this as well. Okay, that looks good. All right, and now finally, we just need to link our menu items to the appropriate pages. So to do that, we just highlight it and then we click on this link icon here. And then we're just entering the page in which we want to link it to. I don't have an about us page, I don't think. So I'm going to link it to our contact us page for now. Again, this is just an example. And then we can hit save changes. When we refresh this page, we should see our new menu design. Okay, perfect. That looks really good. And let's check out our mega menu. Again, this looks super good, right? And our menu is also linkable as well. That's our header section done. Let's go ahead and customize our homepage design. So since we're already on the homepage, all we're going to do is click edit page. And I'm going to go ahead and create a hero section. Let's just X that out for now. Let's click on our document overview. So we can see all the different sections in which we've got. Let's click this plus icon. I'm going to add a row if I can find it. I'm going to drag and drop it here. I'm going to select this two column layout. And let's go ahead and drag and drop our heading. Let's put our heading there. Let's add a button, right? Our call to action. And let's go ahead and add some text. So I'm just going to search for paragraph and let's put it below here. All right, perfect. So let's copy over this heading, paste. Let's copy over this text as well. And let's paste it in here. All right, now let's customize our button. So we'll say contact us. All right, cool. And we'll duplicate this button and we'll say view service. Ten. All right, and let's open up this sidebar again because we want to customize the styling of this. So we'll select this style and we'll change this to 10 pixels and the bottom one to 10 pixels. Okay, so that looks good. Let's change the text color. We'll, you'll see why in a minute because we're going to actually add a background to the section. Let's set it to white. Okay, that looks good. Let's change the text here as well to white. We'll do the same for the heading. Let's change the heading tag to H1 because this is our main heading on our page. And let's customize the typography. Let's change this to EM and we'll say 2.5. Okay, that looks good. We'll also change the color as well. We'll set that to white. That looks really good. Okay, now let's click on document overview again. We'll select row and let's select a background for it. So we'll select background image, choose our image. We'll select this one here. All right, that looks good. Background overlay. Let's select solid and we'll say black. We'll change how opaque we want it. Okay, that looks good. And 
here. I'm happy with that. Let's hit save changes. Let's see how it looks on the front end. And then we'll go ahead. I'll show you how you can actually do this a lot quicker. All right. So let's view our homepage. Okay. So this is our current design. There's some spacing issues. So we'll quickly fix that. And then I'll show you how you can add content a lot faster to your website. All right. So let's click this plus icon. Let's search for spacer. Let's drag and drop it below our button here. Cause we want to add a bit of margin. Or three twenty pixels. That looks good. Let's click on document outline again. And we've got our row and then we'll select this column here. And then we'll say min height for this column is 600 pixels. That looks good. So I think we're about done. In fact, for vertical align, we'll select the middle here. All right. And I think that's it. Let's hit save changes. Let's check once more and then I'll show you how to quickly import different layouts and style onto your website. Okay. So this looks decent, right? Again, you can customize it however you like. And finally, if we go on at templates, let's go pre-made patterns. Okay. Again, as I said, my internet connection is super slow, but essentially we can import any of these designs quickly onto our page, right? So if we wanted a hero section, we can select hero and this will show us all the different hero sections that we've got pre-made, right? So maybe we want to import this layout, right? Okay. It's at the bottom, but no worries. We can drag and drop it all the way to the top. We should attempt to recover these. All right. That looks good. Let's hit save. And then obviously you just swap out the content and just make it unique to your website. Well, as you can see, if I refresh this page, this is a lot quicker than me manually trying to design it myself, right? We can just start from a pre-made layout and then we can just customize it accordingly. Okay. So now let's go ahead and design our contact us page. So let's head over to our dashboard. Let's go pages. And then here we'll be able to see all the different pages we've got on our website. And we have got a contact page. Let's view it. And then I'm going to click edit as well. So this is how our contact page looks like. We've just got a list of departments and email address, but I think it will be much nicer to just add a contact form, right? No one wants to copy over this email, open up their email app and then email you. It's too much friction. It's easier to just add a contact form. Let's click on document overview. I'm just going to delete this entire section. All right. And. Let's click on this plus icon and we'll select the contact form. Again, this is powered by the AIT blocks plugin. I'll leave a link in the description below. So let's go ahead and select contact form. All right, let's pop our contact form here. Okay. So we've got our name field, email field, subject line. And if I click on this name field here, if we look to the right, we can see the type is text. We're showing the label and it's set to required. We can edit the label here and the placeholder and also the validation message as well. If we wanted to add a new field, we just hover over any section, click this plus icon, and then here we can choose the field type, All right? So maybe we want them to enter in their number. We can do that here. Since this is against a dark background, we're going to change the label color. So we'll click on style. Let's select label, label color, and we'll just set this to white. All right. So we can see this is changed here. And then we can just do that for all the different label colors. Let's select our main contact form. Let's select style. And then from here, if we choose label, here we can change all the different label colors at once instead of having to do it individually. So it gives us a granular control. So we can control the styling on a field by field basis, or we can just bulk customize it. All right. So I'm happy with this. So a few more things to note is let's click on document overview. When we click on this main contact form block here, we should have if I go to general, we've got the option to specify where we want to send the email to when our users fill in our contact us form. So that's where we put here. We've got our CC field and our BCC field. We can customize the success message as well that they'll see, right? And a failure message, a validation message, and so on. Once we're happy with everything, we just need to hit save. All right. And now let's refresh this page. 
Okay, and here we've got our contact us form. Again, I'm, I don't like the spacing on this, so we can tweak this slightly, right? Let's add a new row here. And I'm going to select this free column layout. I'm going to change the split to 20, 60, 20. All right. And I'm simply going to drag and drop contact field in this block here. Let's hit save. Refresh this page. All right. And there we have it, our contact us form. Now we move on to our bonus tips. So ranking in Google to get your website ranking in Google. Here are a few pro tips that I've got. Let's head back over to our dashboard. Let's navigate over to settings and then permalinks. And we want to make sure our permalink is set to post name. So it'll be our website and then contact us, for example. So it makes it super easy for your users and a search engine to understand how your website structured, right? So sometimes we see URLs like your website domain name, then we've got the year, the month, and then the post name. It's just long. It's just much easier to say to someone, go to my website at www.youtube, for example. So this is why we're doing this. And then finally, you want to go ahead and install a SEO plugin like Rank Maths. That's one of my favorite currently. It's free as well. And that will just allow you to customize your meta title. The meta description doesn't matter too much these days, but definitely you still want to go ahead and customize the meta title. And it will also give you the ability as well to generate a sitemap, which gives search engines and other AI crawlers a quick overview of how your website's structured and all the important pages on your website. So that's a pro tip for getting your site ranked in Google. The final tip is mobile optimization. So if we head over to this contact page here, for example, let's click on one of these fields. When we click on this option here, where it says desktop mobile, if we select mobile, for example, if you've got the AIT blocks plugin activated, whenever you're in the mobile mode, desktop, or even tablet, it'll automatically customize the styling specifically for this device. And you'll notice this icon here, meaning it's only editing these elements on this mobile device, right? So for example, all right, so let's add a heading. Okay. And again, if we notice, if we pay attention here, here it's locked to the mobile device, right? So it means any changes we make will only affect users viewing our website from the mobile device. We can even hide a certain sections on the mobile device and vice versa as well. So if you wanted, you could add this new heading here specifically for mobile. And then on the desktop, you can choose to hide it. So it gives you granular control over your website design. And that brings us to the end of this video. Like and subscribe for more videos like this. And if you've got any questions, leave it in the comment box.